Do you feel close to God? Today, as you think about your life and where you're heading today, would you say, yeah, God is really close to me? Or would you say, God is very distant from me? There is one quality that you need if you want to be close to God and even feel close to God, and that is a soft heart. Close to me, or would you say, God is very distant from me? There is one quality that you need if you want to be close to God and even feel close to God, and that is a soft heart. In chapter 10 in Ezekiel, you see God's throne chariot with wheels and cherubim riding away from the temple and heading east toward Babylon. Why? Well, because of the violations in the temple, because of the, um, the uh, idols in the temple. And God makes the point, I'm not abandoning you, I'm going into exile with you. And then in chapter 11, he, he says really what he's wanting from us. He says in verse 19, I will give them, these people, these exiles, one heart, a new spirit I'll put within them, and I'll remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. What he is saying is, I don't dwell in stone hearts. When you get idols and your heart gets hard towards me, I'm not going to be that close to you. I'm not, you're not going to feel my presence. Now, it's not that God leaves you because you can never get away from God. But you're not going to experience his presence like you do when you have a soft heart. And that's why he says, I want to give you a heart of flesh. There are four things that we want to ask God for a soft heart towards. Number one, when you're praying like this, I would say, Lord, give me a soft heart to your spirit. I want to know what your spirit wants me to do. I want to hear your voice. I want to be sensitive to when you're leading me to do something or not do something. Secondly, I want to be sensitive to your word and soft to your word. The Bible says the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is anything uh, closed, but everything is naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That's Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11 through 13. And you know, if you don't have a soft heart towards God's word, you're not going to do right. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 18, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You want to have a soft heart toward God's word. Number three, you need to have a soft heart towards people. If you are hard towards people, you're hard towards God. Jesus said, or actually he says in the book of uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, he says, uh, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He who loves not knows not God, for God is love. If you love your brother, then you love God. He says, how can you love uh, God whom you haven't seen if you don't love your brother whom you have seen? God loves people, and if we love God, we will love people. Number four, have a soft heart towards pain. The pain and the plight of other people is something we should always, always care about. It's where the heart of God is. God has a heart for the poor. He has a heart for people who are pressed down. Jesus understands that. Jesus lived that. If you read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, you see that you have a suffering Savior, not a, a Savior who's hard toward that. And so when it comes to suffering, He is very tender toward that, and we should be too. When you have a soft heart toward God's Spirit, towards His Word, towards people, towards pain, you feel and experience the presence of God like never before. Pray that God will give you a soft heart in those areas today.